Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about writing problem statements and research questions. If you recall in the video on getting started with your research project, we talked about how you conceptualize a research project. And I indicated in that video that the process of conceptualizing a research was really 90% of the battle. If you have a good plan, you're likely to have a good research project in the end. There are some specific tools that we can use to aid us in that conceptualization process. Now, in that video on getting started, we talked about balancing the ideas of your issues, your sample, and your methodology, and working back and forth amongst those three things until you were able to refine those into a solid idea that you could move forward with to investigate. In this video, we're going to look at a couple of specific tools that we can use to aid in that process and really help us uh, bring that conceptualization from some sort of a, um, a nebulous uh, idea down to something very specific and tangible that we'll be able to actually look at for a research project. There are three specific tools really that really will help us, uh, and that's problem statements, research questions, and hypotheses. Now, hypotheses are uh, uh, technical in nature and a little bit complicated, so we're going to save that for another time. Uh, and in this video, we're going to look specifically at writing problem statements and research questions. What I want you to uh, remember, if you don't remember anything else from this video, what I want you to remember is that problem statements and research questions are the most important part of any research study. These are the heart of the research study, um, and they, it's critical that you have, um, uh, um, have uh, them clearly conceptualized and written in such a way uh, that uh, they will provide you with guidance for doing your research. If they're not clear, if they're vague, uh, if there's uh, contradictory or conflicting information, uh, then that's the way your research study is going to end up. This is like your roadmap. Uh, it's like your GPS to get you through this uh, research process. So um, uh, spend some time with this, think about it, work at it, uh, because uh, if you get this right, uh, the rest of your research project really will fall into line uh, by using these tools. Um, Let's start with looking at the problem statement. The problem statement is a big overarching statement about what the intent of your research is. Uh, so as a big overarching statement, it's not going to have all the detail in it. It's just going to have uh, the general idea. Now, the problem statement is typically made up of three components. What I call the teapots, the verb, and the keywords and phrases. Uh, teapot stands for the purpose of this study, and it's a good way to start any problem statement. So your problem statement will start out, the purpose of this study is, followed by a verb of some sort, is to describe, compare, evaluate, and then you're going to identify the keywords and phrases, that is, what groups of people you're going to compare, describe, or evaluate, and what issues you're going to uh, research as well. Um, Selecting this verb, let's focus on that for a second. This is critical. Getting the right verb is uh, really important. There's a whole lot of verbs you can choose from, but the verb implies what you're going to do in the research. It, it really implies your method. So if I say the purpose of the study is to describe some, something about some group of people, then that really implies that I'm probably going to give them a questionnaire or I'm going to collect some demographic information, or I might interview them to ask them their opinions about something. See how the word describe implies a certain kind of method. If I say the purpose of this study is to compare group one to group two, or method one to method two, uh, or this program to that program, then it implies a little bit more complex study that, in fact, I'm going to have to have some way of collecting data from at least two different groups, or two different programs, or two different uh, teaching methods, or whatever it is I'm going to compare, and then have some way of comparing the data that I collect from those two different groups. Uh, if I say that the purpose of the study is to evaluate a program, 
Uh, now that's even more complex because not only am I going to collect some sort of information about a program um, that might be complex to generate in the first place, I'm going to then have to compare that information, that data that I collect, to, um, to some sort of criteria for success. So if I'm going to say that I'm going to evaluate the effectiveness of a program, it really means that I'm going to look at a program and determine if that program meets certain criteria that we could make it, that we could then say it was a successful program. Um, if I say that the verb in my um, um, problem statement is um, uh, to uh, determine the cause of, now that's an even more complex kind of study. Uh, so if I want to know does uh, this reading method um, uh, teaching students to read in a certain way cause them to have higher test scores there and better performance and, and better reading skills, now that implies I have to set up an experimental study in order to be able to understand the cause and effect relationship between the, the teaching method about reading and ultimately some sort of performance indicator about how well they're actually reading. So you have to check that, to select that word um, that verb you're going to use in your problem statement with a lot of care. Um, and think about just exactly what is it uh, that you intend to do. Now the last part of the problem statement is what I call the keywords and phrases. Um, this is also referred to as the variables that you're going to study. Uh, and, in, and with these what you're going to do is you're going to identify typically two things the groups of people that you're going to be looking at and the issues that you're going to be um, researching about those groups of people. Now there's other ways uh, to write uh, problem statements and there's other configurations and the keywords and variables don't always identify those two things depending upon the issue that you're, you're researching. Um, but we're going to stick with that example so that we can do a more in-depth uh, understanding of, of how uh, th this whole process of writing a problem statement works. Um, so now let's look at an example here of a, of a problem statement to see what we're talking about. Um, the uh, example that I have is um, that the purpose of this study is to describe and compare the attitudes and performance of male and female graduate students uh, regarding required research courses at IUP. Now as you will note, there are two verbs in this problem statement, describe and compare. This implies that we intend to do both of these things in our research study. Uh, in this case, we're going to describe the attitudes and performance for both male and female graduate students, and then we're going to compare these two things between male and female graduate students. So let's think about uh, how we might set up um, a research study uh, with the, this problem statement in mind. Now if we were going to do a quantitative research study, that is we were going to try to measure uh, attitudes and performance, then that's one approach or we could also do a qualitative research study where we're going to try to get some sense of attitudes and performance from the perspective of the students themselves. Um, for our example, let's focus on the quantitative approach right now and follow that through. Uh, and um, and uh, we can look at the, uh, the qualitative kind of approach in, in another venue. When you think about measuring are two variables of attitude and performance, now we have to have a way of coming up with some sort of numbers that we're going to use to, to measure those with. Um, this is called operationalizing the variables. Uh, we can operationalize attitudes with some sort of a Likert scale questionnaire. Uh, there might even be one already out there that we could go to the literature and find, or maybe we're going to make up our own little questionnaire uh, and, and have a um, uh, a, a, a little questionnaire that we're going to uh, ask some people some questions about their attitudes about taking research courses. Um, operationalizing performance, that could be uh, maybe a test score in the course or a score on a project, but again it has to be some sort of numeric rating of the student's performance 
that we can use to characterize how students do and ultimately be able to compare how the females and the males do uh, in the course. The other keywords and phases, now remember our problem statement is, is the purpose of the study is to describe and compare the attitudes and performance of male and female graduate students in required research courses. So we've talked about attitudes and performance, but what about the other key words? Graduate students, required research courses, um, uh, those are things that we have to define and we have to make sure that we're specific about what we mean by those. Now that might seem kind of obvious or even silly at first to spend some time, well, a graduate student's a graduate student uh, and a research course is a research course. Well, yeah, maybe, but maybe not. Here's the thing. Do we mean all graduate students? Do we mean the graduate students that are on good uh, academic standing or on probation? Do we mean international and domestic students? Do we mean students from all majors? Do we mean older students and younger students? So we need to, we actually do need to think through specifically what group of graduate students we're referring to here. The second issue, required research courses could be very also. Different majors have different kinds of research courses, and so getting a common measure of performance across those research courses might prove to be very difficult. A graduate research course in English, master's program for example, might be very different from a required research course in an education master's program. Okay. So that's the problem statement. Three main elements, the teapots, the verb, and your variables or your keywords and phrases. The teapots is the purpose of this study is, the verb describes the action, what you're going to do, and the keywords and phrases describe who and what you're going to do that with. Now let's turn to the research questions. In essence, the research questions divide the problem statement into more manageable pieces that will actually form the way in uh, the guide posts for you to conduct your research. So if the problem statement forms the big overarching issue uh, that you're going to investigate, the research questions are the more specific issues that you're actually going to collect data about to try to answer. Notice that they're called research questions, and they are written in the form of a question. And what you're going to do is, with the data you collect, that data is going to try to answer what those questions ask. So let's take an example now, go back to our example uh, with the, the problem statement we talked about with uh, describing and comparing attitudes and performance of male and female grad students in research courses. Um, and let's look at uh, some sample research questions that might, um, might flow from that problem statement. Now you'll notice um, on the slide that there are eight research questions. Um, and um, these really can be divided into two parts. The first six questions are going to be addressed, uh, are going to address the um, the descriptive element in our research study. So we talked about describe and compare in our problem statement. And so the first six questions are about the describe part. And the last two questions are about the compare part of our problem statement. So let's look at the first research question. What are the attitudes of graduate students regarding the required research courses? Um, the, the answer to this question will come from the questionnaire, the attitude questionnaire that we're going to give to the students, and it will be data, aggregate data, that will uh, represent all graduate students in terms of their attitude. Um, the second question is similar, uh, except for it asks for data for performance for all graduate students. So again, we're going to use our performance measure, whether it's scores from a test or a project or final scores in the course or whatever. Uh, and we're going to use that number to, to describe all of the graduate students. 
Now questions three and four ask about the attitudes of males and females separately. So in question three, we're going to look at just attitude data for males. And in question four, we're going to look at just attitude uh, data for females. Questions five and six are the same thing with performance data. So question five uh, asks us about the performance data for males and question six, the performance data for females. Finally, when we get to question seven and eight, we'll see that we're actually going to compare the attitude data between males and females in question seven. And we're going to compare the attitude data or the performance data uh, between males and females in question eight. So thinking about all of this data that we're going to slice and dice and present in different ways, it really all comes from two sources, an attitude questionnaire and some sort of measure of performance in the research courses. And all we've done with our eight research questions is talk about how we're going to present that data in different ways for different groups of people to answer different questions. And that becomes the nature of our research questions. That's why the research questions are so important because they really tell us what we're trying to accomplish with this study. What data are we going to collect? And how are we going to collect that data uh, in order to be able to answer those questions? So ultimately, uh, in this video, we discussed problem statements and research questions, uh, and that these are really the basic tools you're going to use for conceptualizing your research. Um, it's necessary, it's, it's imperative to be clear about your problem statements and research questions because if they're fuzzy uh, or you're not clear for in, in, in some way about them, then your, the data that you collect uh, will not, you will not have a specific purpose and you will not be clear about the data that you're collecting and what, what you're going to do with that data. Um, when I teach this in a classroom situation, I always have uh, the students uh, repeat this after me. I say it and, and I make them repeat it. They think it's silly, but I think it's a great idea. Um, what I have them do is repeat uh, this little phrase. The problem statement and research questions are the most important part of a research study. So what I want you to do now is I want you to repeat that with me as I say it again at the end of this video. You ready? All right, let's go. The problem statement and the research questions are the most important part of a research study. All right, thank you.